Hey! Hey there gorgeous friends on the internet. As you can see, I painted my wall white, so it doesn't look like a green screen anymore. Production. So in this episode, I kind of want to talk a bit about programming and my love-hate relationship with it. Because it's a real thing and I feel like not a lot of people talk about this enough. But before we get into it, I do want to drop a shout out to Skillshare for sponsoring this episode. Skillshare makes learning easier and more fun because they offer a ton of courses, 35,000 all across their website. And once you join, you can have access to all of them. You can scroll, see what you like, find it, click it, watch it enjoy it and pick up something new the awesome thing is that if you sign up with the link under the description that i have you get two months for free and after that it's less than ten dollars a month so it's very affordable they have a bunch of great courses on programming design game development whatever your heart desires so go check it out in the description and thank you again for skillshare and you know what we are missing a magic trick let's do that I mean, I do love programming and web development and all of those other things. I mean, I started a YouTube channel teaching people how to do these things, right? And initially, the reason why I did it was that I couldn't find tutorials that of effects that I really wanted to do. Uh, for example, a smooth scroll animation. And what do I mean by that? Whenever you click on a link, it should scroll smoothly to another page. So normally you would click, it would jump instantly. But with the smooth scroll, you, you click on the link and it goes like very nicely like that. And obviously online, you would only find jQuery answer, which it's 2019 people, it's time to move on. I do love programming just because it gives me that create the freedom of literally creating everything I want. I want a website, bam, bam, there we go. I got the website, I want an app, then, and it's more complicated you don't do that but the problem is not every part of the programming atmosphere is as stable as you might think so recently i did a bit of c sharp with unity so game development and i feel like that's pretty stable it's pretty straightforward you create your like let's say you're making a fighting game so you create your 3d models first like pigeons and <laughs> why would you make pigeons in a fighting game attack wing attack and then the special move is like ah! Ah! anyway you get the point so you make your models you bring it in unity you add your physics animations and everything and boom you're done you create the game you put it on the iphone and nobody plays it but i feel like in web development it's just a bunch of monkeys running around you want to see a clip of that i have proof i have footage ooh, ooh. Good job, everybody. We discovered fire. We took the whole village. JavaScript is doing great. Nobody can take us anymore. What's that? Is that Flutter? So it all started pretty simple. You want to make a website? You learn HTML, CSS. That's all you need. You're good. You can make your basic website, put it online. Uh, but when you want to add some dynamic content to it, uh, that's when you want to add some JavaScript. You want to make smooth scroll, a gallery that you can flick your finger through it, JavaScript. Now the problem is all of these three things are separate. So you want to move that button from here to here. You want to grab it with JavaScript and then do something with it from your HTML, right? And then when you have a lot of moving parts, then you want to keep grabbing a lot of things and it gets kind of messy when you want to re-render something and then you want to get some data and things are very prone to be bugging. So the brilliant minds of the people of the internet came up with three solutions. The frameworks, React, Angular and Vue. Okay, so you're pretty much with three choices here. And the problem is that as a beginner, you're getting super confused on what to pick because all of these three things do the same thing. You can create a web app with them. All right, so let's say you go on Reddit or whatever and you search for what's the most popular one and you end up learning that. Now, let's say React, okay? That's very popular these days. So you learn React and then you find yourself stuck because 
with React only, you cannot do that much, okay? There are, there are other third-party libraries that you have to learn. And again, here you have a ton of other choices. How do you do styling in React? Well, you can do it in JavaScript, you can do it in CSS, you have CSS modules and a ton of other packages. How do you do state management? Well, you can do it with internal React hooks and then with Redux and oh my God, do you see where this is going? And for those of you who don't know state management, by the way, if you're a beginner and you just kind of still wondering what it is, it's basically when you have an app and it's basically the state of the application on how your application behaves. So for example, you have a just an, a big object uh, with different kind of sets of data. So let's say is logged in, all right? That's one set of data that you have. And if that is false, then on your, whatever you see on the screen on your app, well, you're not gonna be logged in, all right? So the data that you have in your state uh, dictates whatever you have on the screen. So state managing everything can be quite difficult because if you have a large app, you have a lot of different moving parts. So you have to have a nice and easy, concise way of managing that, that big data. But for some reason, I feel like everybody tries to make this as complex as possible for no reason. Let's take a look at Redux, for example. I think they even had a meeting about this when they started making it. Hey, John, I made this app here and it's a hello world in React, but I feel like can I get more? I feel like it's too simple. What can we do with this? I, well, you can change the H and make it red, like a bigger font size red to make it pop. John, I, if, if you don't wear pants to the meeting again, you're gonna be fired, okay? But the job, this job is not paying enough for me to wear pants. We could do like a state management Thing. So you can build a big app and you can store store like every data easily and you can have access to it easily, you know, like boom, boom, you grab put like bim bam, you know, like how they do on YouTube, you upload and boom, you put it. All right. That sounds, that sounds quite good. All right. How can we make this as simple as possible? Uh, what terms shall we use for grabbing data, putting data and things of that sort? we can use like store for like keeping all the data because you know when you go shopping we can use that terminology easily to explain it to the people and we have action but it doesn't it, it's not an it actually doesn't do anything we just name it action but it it just describe what's going to happen it doesn't actually do anything it just describes it and then you can have like an action creator that I, I don't know, it's, it's, it creates itself. The action gets created and it doesn't do anything until you dispatch it. Because when you dispatch, that's when the action gets. All right, sounds good. Let's do it. You know, that, that sounds good. But what if we make like two packages? Okay, we have Redux, which is the state management but you cannot use it with React, okay? We just make it and you can use it like with whatever you want. And then we make another package that connects React and Redux together, okay? That sounds really cool. Yeah, but what if we also make it so, like you have to connect everything. So only the components you wanna use, you have to use this connect and just wrap everything around it. You have like 10 million parentheses for like readability reasons, you know? Like, you know, when something is connected, you have the parentheses like everywhere. And then if you want to use something, you also have to map this patch to props and you, you can state this patch to maps. And then you still cannot use it anyway. Then you get to the back end. So if you want to store users, you want to do uh, passwords and payments and things of that sort. You have a lot of, again, a huge plethora of options. You can go JavaScript again with Node.js. You can do Django, Python, uh, and t like 10 million other ones. So here you're gonna find, again, a lot of other people arguing about what they should do, how they should do it, what uh, database to use. No SQL is useless. Nobody likes no SQL. Document-based bull. Leave me alone. Go away. 
And then people say, hey, REST APIs are useless and then you should learn GraphQL. So the problem here is, is that it's this big pressure, especially for beginners. I learned not to care about it anymore. I do whatever I want, uh, so that's fine. But everybody who starts picking up these things, they get really confused really fast. And I totally understand because that's how I was at the beginning too. A lot of options and people pressuring you to learn this, this is useless, this is not useless. Uh, and I feel like, again, this is mainly happening in web development, uh, which can be quite stressful. Now, let me just tell you this. Don't listen to anybody, just do whatever you want to do, okay? Because if you want to make this your job or your hobby, if you let other people dictate and get in your way of learn this, don't do this, then you're not going to have fun with it and you're going to be stressed and you're going to feel like you're doing the wrong thing, which is not good, all right? If you, why would you spend your time doing something that you feel stressed about or forced or pressured? Then it's just pointless. So do whatever you want to do. So there you go, everybody. Thank you so much for watching this episode. Don't worry if you're stressed. Take a breather, take some time. It's fine, I got you, I understand you. So I'm excited to tell you that next episode we are gonna start covering Flutter, which is a way you can develop apps by Google. Hold on, what? My phone is ringing. I got a notification. And Flutter just got canceled by Google. Well, the next episode, we are going to cover how to take pictures, wedding pictures and, and photo modeling. So we're going to learn about ISO, shutter speed and aperture. Right, I'll, see you in, I'll see you in the next episode.